Okay, guys, my latest product is out and I'm super excited about this. It is the ultimate metal shader for Blender. And man, it was so much fun to make and it's so much fun to use. It's super easy. And I'm going to show you how it works and why it is special. Um, so first of all, is this animation not like the coolest you've ever seen? I mean, it's the coolest I've ever made and I'm really proud of it. It took a Took a while to get it just right. But anyway, that's another another video right there. <laughs> now, full disclosure, this is a sold product, all right? I'm selling it on Gumroad and Blender Market. It's only $10, though, and I promise you, this shader will speed up your workflow a lot, and it'll give you better, more realistic results. Okay, so to add a node group that you've purchased or really any asset from another blend file, you go up to File and Append. Find the blend file, which for me is right here, Ultimate Metal Shader. Click, double click, and then go to Node Tree, double click, and click on the Ultimate Metal Shader. You don't need to add or append this node group because it's already included into this one. And this is actually one of my other paid uh, node groups that I sell as a sci-fi shaders pack. And this one finds the edges, um, but and it's used inside this node group. So just click on this and click Append. All right, now let's um, change our viewport around so we can get the most out of our user interface. So I'm going to uh, get rid of this shader window by putting my cursor here, clicking and dragging up and then put it in the corner again and drag to the left and change this one to the shader editor. All right, now in our 3D viewport, let's shift A and add a UV sphere and let's add some extra faces to it so it's nice and smooth. I'll do 180, enter, there we go. And I'm gonna size it up nice and big, all right. So with our shader editor over here, we don't want this side panel popping out, we don't need that. So we can just, with our mouse over this section, press in and it goes away. Go to your materials tab for this UV sphere and make a new material. And we are looking at this new material, but I don't see anything. So we can either zoom out or you can press the period button on your numpad and it'll kind of solo or zoom into this, whatever is selected. Delete our BSDF because we don't need it. It is included in the node group for the ultimate metal shader. Put it right here and plug it into surface. Okay, now let's center it, hold alt and click to pan around. And then I'm gonna use my scroll wheel to zoom in. There we go and move it over. And then let's just get real efficient with our space here and make a little strip just for this shader. Awesome, there we go. Now with our sphere selected, I'm gonna press W and then shade smooth. If that doesn't work for you, you can press F3, which is also the search function and just type in smooth or shade smooth and select that. And if you are gonna add some sharp edges to it, let's go down here to the uh, object data properties under normals and select auto smooth. Okay, so let's make a metal texture. Now we can use Eevee or cycles. There are only two things that don't work if you're using Eevee and that is the edge detection because the nodes just don't work yet in Eevee, the, the, the nodes that I use. Um, and then ambient occlusion doesn't work either. And I don't know why, that's, that's beyond me. I'm not that smart but the metal shader does still look really good in Eevee, uh, but I'm gonna use cycles and I'm going to go to real-time render so I can get the most out of it. Also, if you do want edge detection and ambient inclusion, those are not visible if you're in material mode. You have to go to rendered mode to see those. So I'm gonna get rid of my floor grid, uncheck that, and I'm gonna give it some color. So let's make it um, uh, orangey red. Okay, so the thing about this node group is that these sliders, almost all of them, are what I call bipolar parameters, which means they can go plus or minus. So you can add noise to the color, or you can take it away. You can add dirt, or you can take it away. And that works with, like I said, most of these things in the different sections too, not just the color, but also in the reflection of it, which is really just the roughness control. You can add or take away stuff, plus or minus in the bump, and down here are the kind of the sub settings for the noise itself, for the dirt, for the edge detection, and then some global stuff down here on the bottom. Also at the bottom are some inputs for textures. So this is a procedural node group or shader, but you can also take it to the next level by adding a simple image texture such as scratches, imperfections, bumps, and a, even a normals map. So let's make kind of a imperfect metal surface here. So I'm going to go to roughness and I'm gonna start by setting my roughness. So I wanted to start with a shiny object or do I want it to start as a very flat and you know diffuse object? So I'm gonna make it a very rough surface, but I'm gonna chip away at that with the different features here and reveal reflective parts using textures and noise. So if we go positive, it's actually gonna make it even more diffuse. But if we go negative, that's where it starts to chip away and give us some reflective spots. Okay, we also have edge, which like I said, is not gonna do anything unless we add some sharp edge pieces. So I'm gonna do that by going into tab, edit mode, use face selection, and I'm gonna grab a few, uh, few rings here and I'm gonna extrude them inwards so that we do have some sharp sections 
to just kind of you know play with and we can see the how the edges work so e enter and then s just scale it on in there we go and if you want to get real extra i'm going to press i twice give us some individual offsets and then e enter and scale it back out so if we turn our edge detection up or down in the roughness section it's going to make the edges uh, more reflective, which is of course negative, right? Going towards zero, just like the BSDF shader, that means uh, not rough, which means reflective. If we go positive, it's gonna make those edges um, more rough and less reflective. Now the edge is really small right now. We can go down here to the bottom and change the radius to make it a larger edge. We can also add noise to break it up. So it's not a perfect, you know, edge, but um, yep. Okay, so we got that. We've got scratch and aux texture. We haven't plugged anything into those just yet. I'll do that in a second. But let's go down to the noise tweaking section and show you some of the cool features that I have for uh, tweaking your noise. You can make it really large or really fine, depending on the scale of your object and the look you're going for. And um, we have dimension. If you go to zero, it's very grainy, right? Very rough and detailed. If you go higher, it becomes less and less detailed. And I do have a maximum of one, but you can tweak that if you want to inside the node group settings. Now, here's the cool thing is I actually have a threshold control so we can move the bottom level of the noise up. Okay, I'm actually gonna go into EV so that we can see a more instant render without having to deal with uh, noise and samples. All right, so like I said, we got the, the floor of the noise we can adjust and also the ceiling, which is the high, the top level. We can flatten that down too to have a really uh, more fine tuned noise. All right, now the bump section is really cool. Uh, so let's turn up the strength all the way on the bump. Now nothing happened because we don't have anything turned up or down in the noise section. So let's turn down the noise in the bump section. And look at that. We've got this really crazy kind of terrain looking effect going on. And that's where the floor and the ceiling of the noise really comes into play. You know, if I don't want there to be bumps all over the place, I can raise the floor and do that. And now we kind of have a corroded you know, texture where it's actually revealing the reflective parts down below it. We can go the other way, we can go positive, which is now the other way. Now the reflective is on the surface and the flat parts are below. So that's why it's cool to have this positive and negative bipolar stuff going on with all these sliders because you have a lot of control. Um, let's add some scratch textures to really take this thing to the next level. So shift A, search IM for image texture. And I'm gonna, and I'm going to open one of these textures. This one's really nice. This one has some uh, some line streaks in it. So I'm going to plug this into Scratch. It doesn't actually matter which one you use. All right, now with it plugged in, now we can tweak it in here. So in the roughness section, let's do a plus on Scratch and see what happens. Okay, cool. And then minus. Interesting, look at that. It affects the different sections differently because we have such contrast going on. Now, this is looking a little wild. So let's go back to a little bit more of a normal... Um, normal type noise here, there, and then the roughness, let's turn this up a little so it's not super intense. And let's make this overall more shiny. So we can drop the roughness, which makes everything together more reflective. There we go. Now we can see those streaks really good, right? Of the scratch texture, which is turned up positive in the, ref in the, in the reflection. We can also go negative to do the opposite. We can use this uh, streaky texture in the bumps if we want to which we just turn up or down the scratch texture here. Look at that. Wow. And this is an EV, by the way. I don't know if I uh, said that I switched, but this is an EV looking pretty sweet. We can layer this with another texture using the aux texture, which is the whole reason why I made it. So let's open um, something different, something more smooth. Yeah, there we go. This one, plug it into aux, give it a second to load the shader information. All right, now let's go back up here and let's play with aux in the reflection. So plus one, awesome, negative one, cool. So it will make more diffuse on the positive and more reflective on the negative. We can do negative bump, which kind of chips inward or positive, which goes outward. Okay, let's switch back to cycle so that we can see um, some of these additional features such as the ambient occlusion. And I'm gonna zoom in here and get pretty close uh, so let's turn up the ambient occlusion, which is at the very top because it affects the color. See that how it adds kind of the shadow? That's what ambient occlusion is all about, is adding um, some shadow detail in the crevices. You can change how thick or thin that is. You can make it very fine. You go down closer to zero, you can make it very large. and It just kind of sweeps outwards. That's a great way to add some detail to your hard surface models um, and add some grit and some definition to the shapes. 
there's also a clear coat, which gives it kind of an overall, um, like a polished, almost like a waxy coating over it. This is not really a great example right now, probably because of the reflection and stuff going on. But but when you do the clear coat, it can just make things extra shiny and clean looking. Maybe for like a car finish or a, a nice sleek robot, uh, it's, it's good for that. Um, we do have an anastrophic option here. So we turn that up, the, the, you know, the highlights are anastrophic or back to normal. Speaking of normal, let's load a normals map in here. So I'm gonna move these images up, grab this one and shift D to duplicate it. And let's open a normals map. Let's do this one, this one's cool. And plug it into the normals. Now we have to turn up the normals to one. And there we go. Now we have an awesome, oh, let's turn down our clear coat. There we go, we have a normals map. The reason why I put these images on the outside of the node group is so that it's up to you what you load and also so you can do mapping. So I'm just gonna increase the overall scale of this guy so we can really see it. Awesome. And let's make it a little bit easier to see by upping that. There we go. So we already got lots of grit and imperfection. Let's add some edge stuff going on. So in the reflection, let's turn edge uh, down. I like that because it's like the edges get rubbed and touched more and bumped around and that makes them more polished and reflective. Okay, we can also add some darkening or brightening to the edges in the color section. And if you have an HDR uh, you know, image set up in this environment, that'll reflect out the edges and make them really glow really nicely. And it looks really sweet. Um, let's do that real quick. So go into the world setting, environment, change the color to an image texture. I'm gonna use this one because it has a bright sky and a dark ground. There we go, we can already see it. Let's maybe put this up to two so it's really intense. Okay, so we can see the effects of the edge right here and down here, we can add noise to it. And if you put a low scale for your noise size, it look at that, it's really broken up. If I take the edge out of the reflection section and just turn it into the color, you can see now it's black edging, now it's white edging. There we go, that makes it a little bit more visible. Um, so again, you got the radius control, no noise, all noise. I like it somewhere in the middle. Cool, well that's it for my Ultimate Metal Shader. I hope you guys purchase it and enjoy it. I really enjoyed making it. I love using it because it speeds up my workflow a lot. Helps me focus on being creative and not making stuff over and over and over again. I would love to see y'all's renders that you use it on. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below.